Thanks for joining me here at Lab Rat Scientific. Now today I want to talk about my low speed wind tunnel. Now even though this wind tunnel might be a little more sophisticated than what the Wright brothers used to solve powered flight problems over a hundred years ago, it's not that sophisticated so I'm not going to be able to solve any major engineering problems with this device. However, it is great for demonstrating concepts and airflow characteristics over things like vehicles or airplane wings or even small model rockets. So let's take a look at it and see how it works. Now here's a simple diagram of my low speed wind tunnel. Now in this wind tunnel, the air is flowing from the right to the left. So the propeller is actually drawing air through the wind tunnel. This gives me the best possible flow in my test section. Now the propeller section consists of a propeller system and an electric motor. The electric motor is a 120 volt 0.3 horsepower AC motor and that motor is attached to the propeller shaft using a belt. Now the motor spins at 2000 RPM. There's a pulley on the motor and a pulley on the propeller shaft and the ratio of those two pulleys is one to one. So there's both the same diameter. So that means the propeller is also spinning at 2000 RPM. Now the purpose of the transition section is to increase the airflow on the right hand side of the wind tunnel or through the test section of the wind tunnel. Now to do this, I take advantage of the concept of conservation of mass. Now what that means is if I have a relatively low velocity on the left hand side with a larger side of the transition, as the air moves through the transition, as a cross section of the area gets smaller, the velocity of the flow has to increase. And so it's moving faster on the right hand side. Now with the wind tunnel, I'm actually pulling the air from the right to the left, but the same thing occurs. I have the fan sucking the air at a slower velocity, but as the air moves through the transition, it actually makes it faster on the right hand side. Next, I have the extension section. Now, the purpose of this is to separate the transition section from the test section in hopes of getting the best possible flow in the test section. Next, I have a test section. This is where the force measuring device and the test article are mounted. Now, the flow in this section should be as smooth and clean as possible to ensure reasonable data is obtained. And the cross-sectional area of the test article needs to be 10% or less of the cross-sectional area of the test section. This is done to avoid choking the airflow or damming it up and slowing it down. And finally, I have the inlet section. And this is where the air enters the wind tunnel. I've mounted thin walled paper tubes inside the inlet to help straighten out the airflow as it enters the wind tunnel. Now the trick to having a reasonable wind tunnel is to create a uniform airflow inside the test section. Now unfortunately, there's gonna be friction between the wind tunnel walls on the top, the bottom, the front and the back that slow down the flow towards the walls. Now, there's also a swirl introduced by the spinning propeller, and that's an undesirable thing. Now I pull the air through the wind tunnel to try to reduce any swirl induced by the propeller system itself. And finally, the test article should be small so it will reside completely within the quality airflow. My wind tunnel is built out of three quarter inch plywood, two by twos and two by fours. And I use an old electric motor to drive the propeller. This is the inlet section of the wind tunnel. I use toilet paper tubes to try to help me get a nice straight flow into the test section you see there. In the back, you see the propeller that draws the air through the wind tunnel. This is the test section of the wind tunnel. You can see a grid in the background for measuring deflection. You see the lift measuring device and I have a plexiglass window in front so I can see what's going on during the testing. This view shows the housing of the electric motor that spins the propeller. The motor is connected to the propeller by a belt. The motor generates approximately 2000 revolutions per minute and runs off 120 volts AC. This is the propeller end of the wind tunnel. I use two wooden airplane propellers driven by a belt. Now I actually suck the air through the wind tunnel. So I eliminate any issues with the swirl generated by the spinning propellers. Now this is a simple little lift measuring device I built for my wind tunnel. It's purely mechanical. Now I have a test article attached to a vertical mast. 
And that vertical mass is attached to two arms. And you'll notice that the uh, geometry of the system is a parallelogram. And what that does for me is it allows the device to move up and down without changing the angle of attack of my test article. Now there's a lever arm attached to a beam at the bottom. This is outside the wind tunnel down here. And I can attach weights and use gravity as a spring. And depending on how much the wind goes up, it tells me how much force is being generated in the lifting direction. Now this is actually pretty precise because I can measure lift on the order of grams, which is pretty good for doing some experiments and for demonstrations. Here's a lifting device inside the wind tunnel. You see the parallelogram and I have a small flat airfoil for a test. Airflow is off at the moment. When I start the airflow up, you see the wing lifts up. I can measure that deflection to determine the lift. The airflow is off. Airflow on again. So it's a very simple system for mechanically measuring the lift of an object. Here's my simple airspeed indicator mounted inside the wind tunnel. It's a propeller attached to a small electric motor. When the propeller spins, it makes the motor become a generator and generates a DC voltage. So now when the airflow turns on, it spins the propeller and then generates a voltage which is related to the speed of the airflow in the wind tunnel. Here you can see I'm generating about 1.66 volts DC, which equates to 20 miles per hour of airflow in the wind tunnel. Now I remove this to indicator when I'm doing actual tests on test articles. I calibrate my airspeed indicator using a car. I have an assistant drive me down the road at certain velocities, 5, 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, and I measure the voltage for each of those velocities. Here's the data obtained from the airspeed indicator calibration. You can see when the motor was generating about 0.5 volts, I was at a velocity of approximately 7 feet per second. And when the motor was generating a voltage of about 1.65 volts, I was running about 29 feet per second. And also, the data is fairly linear, so that's always a good thing. Well, that's my low-speed wind tunnel. Now, if you're thinking about building a device like this, you have to remember you've got spinning propellers, belts, and motors. So you should build in some protection to make sure you don't get your arms or hands caught in something. Now, it didn't take me too long to build this wind tunnel. It only cost me a couple hundred dollars to do it. However, you may not have the skills or the resources to be able to build your own. Now, there are wind tunnels that are available commercially, but they cost six or seven thousand dollars. So they might be cost prohibitive for you. However, one option might be to use household fans and cardboard and simple materials to build your own simple wind tunnel to do some classroom demonstrations or to do some very basic experiments. Well, that'll do it for now. Thanks for joining me at LabRat Scientific, and I hope to see you next time.